Hello VR space game lovers from around the universe. It's me, Miha, the VR space man, and today I want to share with you my journey in 2023 playing VR space games. I want to talk about the real difference between PSVR 2 and Quest 2, and I want to share my personal experience on what would be the best platform to play VR space games. Now, before we start, there are two critical points I want to raise. These two points are very important to the contest on how I developed this comparison. If you just want the comparison, then feel free to jump to the second half of the video. Okay, so first point is this. This video and this channel are dedicated to VR space game lovers. This comparison is focused mainly on using the VR headsets to play space games. So please keep this in mind. If you are a fan of horror, fitness or other type of games and experiences in virtual reality, then this may be a different thing for you. Why this is important, let me clarify. Space games are very demanding games mostly. Also, most of your time you are in a cockpit and you switch between cockpit and on foot sometimes. It requires a long play sessions and I personally found them to be played seated is much more better than playing standing. And for me, to get the most immersive experience out, the, out of VR space games, I play Quest 2 via cable connected to my PC. So it's more of a PC VR headset. And even if the game supports a standalone mode or airlink mode, I tried them and it's always better to play them via cable. This is the first point. The second point is, what the hell do I mean by VR space games? Everywhere I talk, I say VR space game, so I wanted to be sure it's clear what I mean by that. So let me take a minute to explain. There are many different kinds of space games, from full space simulator, to first person shooter in space, to spaceship combat, to puzzles and real simulation in space. There are just space exploration games, there are ship building games, and even arcade games in space. But for me, any game that have a spaceship and will take me out of Earth is considered a space game. I just want to see what's out there, what our creative collective humanity brains imaginations created for outer space. In reality, we only know less than 5% of what's out there, but right now we can create what we want. Are there aliens? Is it just empty? I personally don't care, I just want to see it all and immerse in all of these worlds. I spent almost all of my 2023 playing all kinds of space games on both of these excellent platforms. In 2023 alone, I clocked over 500 hours playing space games on PSVR 2 and almost 250 hours playing space games on Quest 2. In this video, I will give you my honest opinion. I will try to avoid the technical aspects. This is not a technical sheet comparison. This is my actual experience, what I really felt after playing for almost every day for a whole year. So, with that in mind, let's jump back to the comparison and welcome people who skipped this. <laughs> so, let's start. When it comes to comfort, both PSVR 2 and Quest 2 are light and comfortable for long playing sessions. The PSVR 2 front padding is not the best compared to PSVR 1. Also, the Quest 2 front pressure on the head is something to consider and can be a little bit painful for new players. But for me, I can play on both of them for 4 hours or more without any problem. Quest 3 should be lighter, so probably it will take the lead when it comes to comfort, but we will have to see. When it comes to resolution, for Quest 2 and Quest 3, it will vary depending on your PC. If you have a high-end PC and you set the Quest 2 resolution to max, then it will provide clear resolution. Quest 3 will even improve on this by better hardware. But more important with the ability to decode AV1. This is very important when playing your Quest connected to PC that Quest 2 currently doesn't support. When it comes to PSVR 2, 
It has the edge on resolution and lenses from hardware perspective, also wider view angle versus Quest 2 and even versus Quest 3. But unless a game apply the PS foveated rendering with eye tracking technology, you probably want to notice the difference when playing the same game on Quest 2 or 3 on max resolution. Now, keep in mind that if you have a medium to low NBC, then you won't be able to play your game on Quest on max resolution. So I personally think that overall PSVR 2 have advantage when it comes to resolution, but it's not this significant. When it comes to performance, I believe it's very similar to resolution. Performance will vary massively depending on your PC, high-end PC can provide good and stable performance, but again, foveated rendering provides the edge in the PSVR 2 favor. And again, very limited amount of games actually apply this technology so far. So, but still for VR space games, PSVR 2 has the advantage when it comes to performance versus both quests. Again, it's not that significant and the edge is always provided due to the foveated rendering with eye tracking. When it comes to immersive features, this one fun start. Quest 2 and Quest 3 can be played wirelessly. You can use them standalone, you can play them with Airlink, but as I said in the introduction that you may have skipped, VR space games are very demanding games. It's much more better experience from graphic performance if played connected to your PC via USB cable. Still, playing without a cable, especially if you play standing, is a unique experience that PSVR 2 simply cannot offer. On the other hand, PSVR 2 sense controller haptics, adaptive trigger and headset trampling and eye tracking increase the immersion level significantly. In VR, space games there is a lot of takeoff, there is a lot of landing and the crashing and much more. These experiences for the same game when I play them on PSVR 2 and then I play it on Quest 2 is like a completely different game. I really miss these features on quests much more than I thought. Now when it comes to Quest 3, they mentioned improved in the haptics in the controller, but I yet to see how it will be in real life. There is also stuff like color pass through and more features that as a hardcore VR gamer I don't really care about. For me when it comes to immersion, right now PSVR 2 is the best, but we'll have to see what Quest 3 is gonna offer. When it comes to games, this is when things completely change in the favor of the quests. Pretty much every single VR space game is also playable on a quest. Everything is available on Quest 2 and it will be also available on Quest 3 due to backward compatibility. There are irregular ports coming to PSVR 2, but some games are Quest 2 or PC exclusive. Let me make it clear. PSVR 2 is new to the market, it has a big catalog of games with almost 100 games, but good and excellent VR space games are less than 10. Quest 2 and Steam VR space games have 5 years of game catalog. They have almost 25 very good space games, some are really excellent. When it comes to games, the Quest's brothers have the edge significantly. When it comes to tracking, Quest 2 tracking is excellent. I don't remember ever losing tracking while playing Quest 2. PSVR 2, even with an extra infrared light camera, still lose tracking from time to time. It's not a big deal breaker, but it's worth mentioning and I assume Quest 3 tracking will be excellent as well. When it comes to audio, the built-in audio in Quest 2 is really not this good. The ear, ear headphones for PSVR 2 are loud and ok, this can be solved by getting an external headset for Quest 2, it's not a deal breaker but again it's worth mentioning and I hope for Quest 3 it will have an improved audio overall. Now let's move to the most important item in this comparison, the cost. All of the PSVR 2 accessories and even though they are slightly more expensive than Quest 2 accessories. All of the PSVR 2 accessories in my point of view are optional, while some of the Quest 2 accessories are mandatory, at least for me. For example, 
even thought I have a very tiny frame glasses, it almost broke when I tried to play Quest 2 with them. Things like Quest 2 prescription lenses, head strap and headphone are in my point of view not optional. So with this in mind, let's take a look to the cost. PSVR 2 headset is almost double the price when it compared to Quest 2. It's almost the same cost with Quest 3. Of course, it requires a PS5 to play, but as I explained, you need a high-end PC to be able to get the performance and the graphics of Quest 2 and or 3 similar to your PSVR 2. The price of the high-end PC is almost treble the PS5 price. And if you factor in the mandatory accessories of Quest 2, you end up with the quests costing more than double your PSVR 2 plus PS5. So, which one is the best? If you already have a PS5 or a high-end PC, then your life is simple, man. You don't need to think twice. Just go with your corresponding headset for your platform. Just go to space right now. But if you are just starting to think about blasting to space in VR and you have a low NBC or a PS4 or an Xbox, then I hope this video can help you decide. For me, it's down to what is more important to you. A much bigger catalog of games, almost 3x but more expensive, almost a double, or fewer games for less than half of the cost. There is also a few factors I want you to consider, especially when it comes to long term. So, what do I mean by that? VR space game releases are not this regular. There are mostly a few games that's coming every month. From what I've seen as pattern in 2023, all new VR space games get released on post platforms. Most of them are by third party developers. There are many Quest 2 ports also heading over to PSVR 2, but some of them will never make it to PSVR 2. Games like Elite Dangerous, whose developer just stopped supporting console, Quest 2 exclusive like Lone Echo 1 and 2, Space Engine, which is the best space experience in VR from my point of view, and some of Valve exclusive may just never make it to PSVR 2 ever. If you want to enjoy all the space games, see all what humanity have to offer across all platforms. If you can afford the cost, including a high end PC, then maybe go with Quest 3. I still want to see if Quest 3 controllers will provide any good haptic systems close to Sony Sense controls, which for me is a game changer because touching is a very important sense for humans. It's as important as visual and sound. The VR Sense controllers are really unique and the way developers are taking advantage of them increase the immersion in space to a whole new level. The second point is the foveated rendering with eye tracking. It's something that I believe will play a massive role in the future. I think PSVR 2 can even work with BS6 and it can stay in the market much more longer than its planned 7 years due to this technology. Of course, you can always bump up your PC to keep up with the demand of the games and you can keep using Quest 3, but it Eventually, I think PSVR 2 is here to stay, especially that Meta refresh its Quest 2 line very fast every few years. So, with all of this in mind, let's summarize. If you want to blast off to space right now, you want the best value for money, great immersion, lower cost entry, you can't go wrong with PSVR 2 plus PS5. Even with fewer games, some of the current space games already available like No Man's Sky can offer alone hundreds of game time. If you want to enjoy all VR space experiences, some of these experiences that will never go to PSVR 2. If you are a space junkie that want to see every planet created, and if you can spare some cash and you have a lot of time to play a big backlog of games, then I would say go with Quest 3 plus high-end PC. I can't recommend Quest 2 because even though I love it, Quest 3 is simply improving on it in every aspect. And with better haptics for the controller, AV1 decoding, better audio, these are critical if you want to enjoy space in VR. 
if you like this video or you want to learn more about the RSP schemes, please don't forget to like and subscribe. This will help me a lot as a new content creator. Thank you for watching and may your trips to space be filled with wonders, joy and discovery as mine.